quick disclaimer before this video begins. Using genetics as an excuse is one of the most common excuses I've heard. Um, not just in fitness, because if you don't get the results you want, you can just blame it on something that you can't really control, i.e. your genetics. I absolutely fucking hate it because I used to be that guy. I used to be that guy that always blamed his genetics. You know, I used to literally go up to my parents and be like, I was fat as a baby, so I was just like to my mom. I was like, why the fuck do you eat so much when you were pregnant? And you can think how fucking stupid that is, but ultimately blaming something that you cannot control is such a shitty way to live and I won't want to start upon any of you watching this video, so just fucking don't. But getting straight into the video, how good of a responder you are to strength training or how fast you can actually build up muscle is by the population is determined on a bell curve distribution graph. So it'd go like, <laughs> so, you know, like most people would be in the middle of the distribution graph. So, you know, there'd be average, above average, below average. If you put people who does the same training eats the same, sleeps the same, have the same composition to start with, but they have different genetic predispositions to building muscle, then all of them will build different amounts of muscle in different times. And that might sound unfair, but that's just the way life is. Some people grow up to be shorter, some people grow up to be taller, that's just how it is. And you can get people on extremes of the side and the people who are fucking freaks who can build muscle so fucking easily and get to like insane levels of muscular development. So. This would be like your fucking Chris Bumsteads, your Ronnie Coleman's, your Big Rammies, like it, it's them type of people because if you've seen them natural, they were still they were still fucking massive. They were still at a level where you could take steroids for the whole of your life, get to your genetic potential, and still not look like that. Like that's how fucking insane they were natural and you know, they hopped on and had an amazing response. And equally there's also people at the other end which, you know, can't really build that much muscle at all and have pretty shit genetics in terms of building muscle which i mean that's just the way life is isn't it but that being said as i've already said in the fucking disclaimer using it as an excuse is not that fucking like fulfilling at all like it's just not going to get you far in life and even if you are at this end even if like and by the way that like there's a very small chance that you are actually in that fucking range but that being said, you can still look better than fucking 90% of the male population. Because realistically, like, there's still a lot more aspects to a good physique, which I'll be getting onto soon. But that'd be like how easy, how easily you can drop down body fat, how bad your, or good your muscle insertions are. Even shit like how far you can push yourself is, I'd say, largely determined by your genetics. So there are still, like, a lot of things at play when it comes to attaining a good physique. So that being said, this is, that was only for like muscular like development, how fast you can grow muscle. And that'd be moving on to the next thing, which is muscle insertions. And this one's a pretty big one as well, because how fast you can grow muscle before, I should have probably said this, but you know, you can affect it by, you know, how well you train, how well you sleep, how well you eat, right? You can, there's a lot of variables when it comes to actually growing muscle and how fast you grow it. But with insertions, there's literally none. <laughs> It's either you have it or you don't, and I'll show you a couple pictures up on the screen right now of, you know, people with bad versus good insertions, and you'll see it does make a big difference when it comes to the aesthetic appeal of the physique, but, you know, even people at, like, a high level of, like, athletic ability, like, they might not still have the best insertions, and that's no way a disadvantage to their performance. It's literally just how it looks, and that's all insertions is, really. That's all it does. It just gives an aesthetic appeal. It's all basically just fucking on aesthetics, and you can have, like, a fucking eight pack and, and they'll be like bulging out and shit and you'll be on top of the world or you can have some like fucking disfigure like ah uh, placement everyone's is different everyone is different how many abs you have is actually determined by your insertions so you can't have a fucking 10 pack oh. to train but who fucking cares right i mean it's just it's just the way you were born also your biceps as well so you can have a long or short head i'd like to think i'm somewhat in between you can also be somewhat in between as well maybe on the longer side. I mean, overall, it doesn't really fucking matter. There's benefits to both. Uh, if you have a long head, like a longer head, bicep peak, it does like look better in terms of like it being more filled out. But also when you have a short head, it, you can get a bigger peak and just say you have bigger arms. So usually fucking winning, right? Now I'll cover two more aspects when it comes to attaining a good physique that genetics has a role to play in. And 
metabolism slash hunger is one of them I'd consider. Now this is largely genetic and this one hits home, close to home, because it's this one that I blamed my fucking ass off to some other outside forcer my parents when I was younger and just couldn't control my fucking eating because that was the biggest problem I had was this and your metabolism is basically just how fast like how many calories how easy it is to burn your calories no I should probably check it up what is your metabolism I don't fucking know <laughs> yeah so it's the process by which the body changes food and drink into energy so basically it's just basically how easy you can fucking burn calories like so and how much of that you actually store as fat is also genetic which was going to be the second point but they too they mix in very well and what's interesting is is so when you do get fat you actually gain more fat cells and it's actually the fat cells that grow and um get fat <laughs> but when you lose fat you don't actually lose the fat cells you just like deflate them imagine them like being a fucking balloon right and your fat cells being a balloon and when you gain fat you blow up the balloons and you also add in some more balloons into your god forbidden fucking body when you actually lose fat you deflate the balloons but you don't actually take away any of the balloons i said balloons way too many fucking times <laughs> that's a good analogy though that's a that's a good analogy that's a good way of putting it but so you can actually be born with more balloons right uh more fat cells so obviously you'll be at more of a disadvantage i guess when it comes to actually getting to lean mean physique you know what i'm saying but like as genetic as this is i feel like it's more within your control i just have this fucking like uh statistic up in my fucking head it's from a jeff nippard video where it's like your metabolism and how much fat you can store is 40 percent heritable so you only inherit like 40 percent of fucking genes from your parents and 60 percent is like within your control that kind of thing. The reason why I was fucking like fat and shit was my mom just ate way too fucking much. She was telling me stories of how fucking much she ate and I was just like, what the hell? Obviously I wasn't gonna be like, you fucking pig. <laughs> nah, allow it. I would not do that. She was just trying to get me bolted up, I guess. And you know what, in a way, like it's interesting because I used to fucking hate my genetics. I used to like I'm I've been like saying this into this entire video. You know, I used to fucking hate my genetics, I used to blame it on my parents and shit, but at the end of the day, I found out I have actually pretty alright genetics, so, and it's actually one of the things I am most grateful for, because I just put on muscle pretty easily, and my, like, strength genetics are, as well are, like, pretty good, obviously for the level I'm at right now, I'm only 17, so, doing bits at 17, I guess, I'd like to give myself a fucking ego boost and say I'm a top 1% male physique, but... God knows, right? But as you can see, you can largely control, like, the amount of fat in your body because, I mean, if you've seen me in the fucking past before, outward appearance is one thing, but, like, inward, I was just, like, I was always hungry, you know, I was, I was eating because I was anxious as well, so mental health does have a role to play in all of this, and there's more intricacies when it comes to... There's more, like, intricacy variables when it comes to, like, actually attaining a good physique, but I'm not getting into that. I'm just getting into the crux of it so far. That being said, mental health does have a massive role to play in all of it. And it's interesting because I only kind of, well, blew up when I started self-improvement. Like around this time last year, my mental health was getting better. I was training with all my friends, so we were pushing each other really hard. <laughs> you know, correlation, not causation, or whatever the fucking term is. But I gained so much size in that period where I was starting self-improvement, I was doing it with my friends, I was really happy, I was like dedicating my fucking life to it, and ultimately I gained a shit ton of size and muscle, and then I plateaued over someone because I wanted to get bitches. But with that being said, the main takeaway is don't fucking blame your genetics, don't ever blame your genetics, and use it as like a fucking crook when you're not getting the results that you want. Really take time to introspect and be like, am I training right? Am I sleeping right? Am I eating right? Like, um, there's so many things when it comes to actually putting on muscle, right? So, take as much time as you need to actually reflect on yourself. And that's a really hard thing to do because, you know, it has to take humility to do that. That's not always the easiest thing to do because you just want to think you're on fucking top, aren't you? You little fucking piece of shit. But with that being said, that is your genetics. And that was a pretty solid video, I'd say. I'm literally going to go gym in, like... Oh fuck, I'm probably a bit late to go gym right now. I need to get the fuck out of here, bruh.